Um, but you know, you're saying things that I know a lot of people just, they're not being told this. You know, and no, the thing no is, one tells this, you know, like no one tells you don't wash your face, basically, you know, like, yeah, you're, but it's true. It's true. Like, you know, I grew up on a farm and I believe because I was exposed to a lot of dirty jobs, I wasn't sick. I had a healthy immune system. Um, and there is, there's just so many products out there that are all hype. And then you end up accumulating a drawer of junk half of which you never use and you you look at it you're always picking it up and going oh my god I spent 50 bucks on this and a 120 on that one and you throw it back in your drawer and it's sort of like you're giving us permission to like simplify your life get rid of it you don't Well, welcome to the Chris Company Podcast. Joining me today is Dr. Muriel Viga, referred to as Dr. Mimi. She's actually a scientist, a PhD. She's got an incredible background. And today we are here to talk about skin and the microbiome on the skin and her wonderful product called VGAM. So welcome to the podcast, Dr. Mimi. I'm so glad you're joining us today. Thank you, Joyce. So glad to be here. Very excited for this show. Yeah. So right off the bat, you know, a lot of people, when we think about organs of the body, we recognize the heart as an organ, the liver as an organ, but actually the largest organ that we have is our skin. And tell me about the skin's microbiome and the difference between the microbiome, and I'm hearing this word microbiome, Biota? Am I saying that correctly? Microbiota. Is there a difference? Yeah. Yeah. You would probably be saying it better than, than I. <laughs> so, um, so actually the microbiome, just to simplify, you know, terminology, uh, microbiome would be the science of the microorganisms living in and on our body. So the microbiome, the human microbiome would be any microorganisms that would be living in symbiosis with, with human, right? And uh, on the skin, so the skin microbiota would be the actual microorganisms, the microbes, okay. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the gut microbiome would actually be the genes. So the science of those microorganisms living on, in our gut. So that's, that's it. Right. So okay. the skin flora or the gut flora is actually the same thing as a microbiota. It's just this ecosystem of microorganisms. Got it. Wonderful. Well, before we sort of talk a lot about your product, your background is so fascinating to me. I know that you are a scientist and did a lot of research in cancer, but you were always very interested in the skin skincare products. Tell me a little bit about your background in that move from being a researcher to launching your own company in, in the skincare line. Absolutely. Well, thank you for asking the question. I think, you know, like you started by saying we're here to talk about the skin. Uh, for me, I think everything is connected. So we're going to be talking a lot, a lot more than the skin. <laughs> but, uh, but my life journey is also very much interconnected and uh, connected particularly to the product that I developed uh, later on. So I've always been passionate about understanding how the world works, especially when it uh, was connected to our health, my health as a as a child, even, you know, like I, I grew up in the countryside this summer, you know, exploring nature and trying to figure out even how it worked. Um, teenage years, I developed acne. I was training tracks and uh, having a very, very um, active lifestyle and very good in science. I mean, science had become, for different reason, a, a refuge. I really, really tried to understand the world through science and what, what I knew. So I joined the chemistry club, but I also spent a lot of Sundays 
at the Crud's drugstore, the pharmacy, trying to figure out what could help my skin because we didn't have internet, right? So you had the ingredients, you were trying to figure out what they, they did. And uh, in the chemistry department, you're looking it up and trying to figure out, you know, which ingredients actually would work for my skin. And um, connecting it all, my mother was a very inspiring person uh, and uh, very, very curious. I, I guess I got that from her. And she would always tell me, well, I don't understand this. We didn't have acne when I was young. And she skipped a generation. So she had me, had me quite late. So she's, she was born in the 30s and, you know, grew up, uh, you know, in the 40s, 50s in the countryside on a farm. No acne. And, you know, as a teen, you were like, oh, well, yeah, mom, sure, you didn't have that. Maybe you didn't have acne, but, you know, obviously other people had it. But then later on, you know, like I, I was proved actually wrong, you know, as many teens are, I guess, right? But long story short, I became a chemist because I really wanted to understand my skin and how to care for it. Uh, at the same time, I wanted something that was, you know, kind of natural because I love nature and and um being wholesome in a way. Uh, and it was re very difficult in those years to find something that, that, that in, in those lines, everything was really synthetic. And, and I'm a chemist, so I, I, I do believe in chemicals. But, you know, there are some that are safer than others. And uh, mm -hmm. we certainly weren't not at that stage in the 90s anyway. And um, at that point, my mother actually was diagnosed from a leukemia. And I was studying biochemistry and uh, figured, okay, what is that? Leukemia, you know, and the big word, the C word, the cancer word uh, was something that I wasn't familiar with. And if you're familiar with the research in oncology, there wasn't that, you know, like there was some research, but there's a lot of treatment and research that has been done in the recent years. Mm -hmm. We've discovered the, the genes and um, the, the, the mutations behind it. And, but at that time it wasn't, you know, it was, it was emerging really. So I did, uh, you know, like I, I, I had uh, experiences in oncology. I wanted to understand it. It's, it's as if, you know, like to take some sort of control Mm -hmm. over a, a disease that, you know, like you do have some, we have a lot of control in terms of the risk factors we expose our, ourselves, but mm -hmm. there's some risk factors we can control, right? Mm -hmm. And but how and what do we do when it happens or even to prevent it? Again, there's some things we can't control, but there are that we can. So what do we do? So I, that, that experience with my mother She's she she was really great for a, a good 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 while. She passed away now, but she didn't pass away from uh, from leukemia. Actually, she was in remission when um, you know like oh. she, she she went to, you know up until eighty seven. So <laughs> it's not uh, uh, it, it was a good life. And um, so at that time, uh, you know, like I started digging and again understanding that world, and I spent more or less twenty years in that world doing many things, uh, drug design, uh, clinical trials, uh, working for nonprofit organizations and big pharma. And this is where I had like a very intense career, uh, connected many, many things. I'm a connector. I understand, uh, you know, science and, and the commonalities of things. And uh, I, I got a very good, good understanding on how it works. And also connecting it to the skin because I still love the skin and my first passion was on the skin, right? So anytime there was a project that was relating to skin, I would actually jump on it and, and learn more. And at some point, and I'm taking a bit of time there because it is a very, you know, personal journey, but at some point in my oncology career, uh, my son was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And this hit very close to home. And again, for everybody, he's doing wonderful. Total remission. It was re uh, resected completely. And uh, he's doing well in school, in sports. He was young and recuperated. Uh, well, we think everything. Well, it's very difficult uh, to know because he was still growing. So, mm -hmm. right. Uh, but that event 
made me take a step back. I needed to change environment. It was very close to home. I needed to care for my family, for my son, and mm -hmm. away from the oncology space for a while anyway, or so I thought. And uh, I was working for a group that was very empathetic, and uh, they transferred me to the immunology department, where I learned lots of connections again, and worked on projects relating to skin. Again, a skin uh, psoriasis was one of them, mm -hmm. and other more rare diseases, but mostly at that time in immunology, because of the computer capacities, we were able to analyze the gut microbiome mm -hmm. and all its benefits for human health, right? And immunology. And because I had this passion for the skin, I started connecting things and said, okay, yeah, this is great for the gut, but what happens to the skin? Because we have microorganisms living on the skin, right? And this is kind of when I had my Eureka moment, right? Where I said, oh my God, you know, like, and I started digging in more and more and I realized, oh, this is the element that was missing when I was younger. I wanted something na natural, but I, I didn't feel anything made sense because the big lab hadn't developed anything. So who was I to develop something? And I didn't think I could, and I probably couldn't because I hadn't realized that these dimensions also, you know, like the, the skin was an, an organ, a super important organ, but also an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the days when I was a teen, you know, what you ate, you know, or you were told what you ate doesn't matter. You know, it's just mm -hmm. your skin, but it is, you know, the window to the whole, you know, the protector of your whole body. But of course, it's also a reflection of of your uh your health right so um so yeah so that was a, a really insightful moment where okay this is great my mother was actually probably right when i was a teenager and she was telling oh we didn't have that much because we didn't have that much acne back in the days where we didn't cleanse so much the cleanser actually removes a lot of uh, the microorganisms and there's actually studies that have been made that have a direct correlation with the quantity, you know, like of, of cleansing that we do and, uh, and uh, the uh, diseases or uh, symptoms that we see as acne or um, even dermatitis, right? Mm -hmm. So the more you protect your mi microorganisms, so my, your microbiota, the more uh, your skin is healthy because these these conditions are actually triggered by a disbalances of microorganisms. So if you clean too much, there's one type that takes over. Usually it's acne, but often also can be dermatitis. We think these are two conditions completely unrelated, but they kind of are related in the fact that it's the one type of microorganisms that takes over the other. It's not the same type, mm -hmm. but it does create the, these symptoms. That is absolutely fascinating. I never would have, I would, I would not have made that link between over cleansing the face and acne because you're right. You're potentially killing off healthy micro, you know, bacteria and it affects the skin. That is absolutely fascinating. So tell me about the go-to duo. So I just got, this just arrived in the mail. I love your packaging oh. by the way. So the go-to duo, I mean, when I, I'll be honest with you, um, Dr. Mimi, when we met in New York City and you were telling me about your background, I was absolutely fascinated. And uh, I, I love to buy products and try different things. Um, I have been very unhappy finding a moisturizer for my skin because it's, they're usually too oily for me. Um, but this system that you have created, which I want you to talk about, is just revolutionary. When I put this on my skin, I felt like my skin was having a drink of water. I love the smell, the fragrance in it, but it's just so amazing. And the fact that you can, in the winter time, for example, if my skin gets really dry, I add more of this versus the serum. Can you explain the 35 ingredients and how these two products work together for healthy, glowing skin? 
Absolutely. Uh, that will be my pleasure. I mean, <laughs> I think I think it is revolutionary. Uh, you know, like you say, I'm using that word because uh, I had to really have a revolution inside my head <laughs> to come up with this because what I wanted really, you know, was to have everything that my skin needs, nothing it doesn't, nothing wasteful, you know, in one formulation you know, like, so just a, a clear, easy, you know, piece of, uh, you know, peaceful, you know, care, right? Just like a big, big smoothie. And I really tried to make one formulation. That's what, that was my goal, right? But I did want it for my teens as well. And I want it for myself, who's, you know, like looking towards, you know, like this second part or third or fourth part of, of, you know, like of my life. And, and I want to age gracefully and healthily. Right. So I want to make sure I maximize what I can, what I can control, you know, and the rest I can't control. It, so, and, uh, so I, I start by mapping out all the ingredients, all the ingredients that can be used for your skin. And I will tell you, there are some ingredients in there that are usually not used for the skin, but because I have this expertise, on uh, the uh, microbiome. And actually I did my PhD in biofermentation biotechnology where, where I was growing microorganisms. So I use my knowledge of how to grow healthy microorganisms, you know, to make sure that I fed, you know, like the nitrogen sources and the carbon sources on, you know, like for the microorganisms. So you mentioned the 35 ingredients. So these are 35 ingredients that I kept after all my research. I kept after taking out anything that was unsafe. So the big no-no ingredients, those ingredients that, you know, may have a downside even of using uh, evidently those petroleum-based products. Uh, but also you mentioned fragrance. You love the fragrance. There's actually no fragrance in the product. Oh, wow. It's one essential oil that I've used because I love that oil. I use only one because any sort of essential oil is not essential <laughs> first. Okay. <laughs> it's called essential oil because it's the essence of the plant, right? Okay. But uh, it's not essential. It's actually a very, very potent and concentrated a compound, you know, molecules, and uh, they can be very irritating to some people. I chose uh, a, an essential oil that was not so tricky, but still, you know, like people react to many different things, especially the, the oncology world, cancer world can be very close to my heart. I make sure that everything is safe for uh, that community as well. And in, in, you know, in terms of those that are undergoing treatment that have gone mm. through treatment that have sensitive and sensitized skin, mm. if I can use that, that mm. word, but also those that are trying to prevent anything from occurring. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want the ingredients safe, but, um, so that this is why, you know, like this version with the, uh, essential oil of cedar in, in your case, uh, also exist without essential oil at all. So for those that would have extra sensitized skin mm -hmm. could also use uh, the, pro the, the product because it's not an essential mm -hmm. of, you know, that's the only ingredient because we're so used to having fragrances and I've also been used, oh my God, the smell, it's very natural. You know, without mm -hmm. the essential oil, it, sell, it, it smells like salad. Really, mm -hmm. it's like it's plant based and, you know, so so mm -hmm. it's not uh, harsh or, you know, but it it doesn't sell, it's, it smell like eggs, but it, it doesn't smell like what we're used to. So this is why I added this essential oil in that product. In the serum, you don't have any oil. So it's a mineral serum and mm -hmm. there's no fragrance. So it doesn't smell anything really. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but let's come back to, to the product. So I had 35 ingredients, wanted it for my kids, wanted it for myself, for my friends. And, and I was trying, okay, let's do winter. Let's do summer. I was conditioned and programmed by the industry that I've, you know, looked to and look, uh, you know, like to develop something in for years. Right. So trying to align, you know, what I knew of, you know, the microbiome and, and, and the chemistry of the skin 
with, you know, the way we use products currently. And it wasn't working until I realized, okay, what really changes at the basis? How does the skin work? It really works the same for you, for me, for my teenage boy or my, uh, my grandmother, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's skin at the core has the same, same functions. But what changes is the quantity of some oils that are produced and salts that are produced. And this depends on our metabolism. What affects our metabolism? Our hormones, absolutely. Our sleep levels, our stress level. Have you ever broken out because you were stressed? Mm -hmm. Most people have. Uh, our exercise level, what we eat, where we live, the time of the year. It's all, well, actually, the time of the, the year doesn't influence our metabolism, but it does influence the barrier that the skin needs to protect mm. from the environment, right? So all these factors, there's no way we can control them all. And so this is why, you know, like by trying to do one formulation with these fabulous 35 ingredients, uh, I would only satisfy those that were in those specific needs at that time. You buy a product, most of the time you're, you know, like you're, you're advised to buy X, Y, and Z for this, for that, for this, you know, like you go home, you tried it out, you kind of, you play with it. Okay. It kind of works. And then it stops working. It's either too early, not enough, or you break out, you become dry, you have patches, you know, like you get all these symptoms it's just because it's not adapted to your skin now and a woman's skin changes four times a month because mm -hmm. there's four, four phases of hormone, you know, where, you know, sometimes she's glowy and she hasn't done anything. And sometimes she's just dull. She hasn't done anything like different than it's just the way it is. Right. So by what I decided to do is so, okay, let's look at the function and what varies and separate those elements. So that the, the 35 ingredients that I mapped are either pre or post biotic. So they are there mm -hmm. to feed and to provide the environment to the microorganisms on your skin. So these guys, you just need to feed. So I have them both in the one and the two, you know, so no matter how much proportions you use, you're going to get your, uh, your fix for, <laughs> for your microorganisms. But what I did is put exclusively the oils and there are quite a few. I, I, I picked different plant-based oils that would correspond to the healthy sebum that we produce naturally. So in terms of the fast fatty acid profile, so mm -hmm. I really tried to, to mimic the sebum. So this is why it penetrates really fast because it's made for the skin and it's, it's not oily. Wow. But some, some people will need more than others because they don't produce much sebum. But, however, sometimes you do have like oily skin because you're stressed or tired or, you know. So then, you know, like you will want to balance with something that's not as oily. Even if the oil is very light, you might not need as much and sometimes you need more. So you can adapt with the serum that contains what are called called humectants. So these mm -hmm. are molecules that are actually keeping the water in your skin because there's the water and the oil. These are two aspects, the lipids or the oils or the fat, you know, which are actually very good. Everybody is against fat, but I love fats, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so, so they, because these create a layer of protection. So if you have water in your skin that are kept through, you know, yellow acid is actually a very good humectant and it's actually also a prebiotic. So it's fa a fabulous ingredient. You should have it in any formulation. This is, you know, like uh, one of these multifunctional ingredients. So it keeps the water in the skin through these bonds with water. Um, and then if you have like this small film on top, well, you also protect your skin from water evaporation, etc. 
So depending on the time of the year, you will need that layer of protection to be more or less thick. Or, you know, if you live, live in a very dry environment versus a very humid environment. So all of these, you know, like they change. You, we travel, you know, it changes like that. So what do mm -hmm. we do? We can adapt the proportions mm -hmm. of the two and very quickly. You mentioned we met in New York. That city, I mean, I land there and my skin has like oily and changed. And I don't know if it's the pollution and what it is in that air. You mm -hmm. know, like to adapt it quickly is fabulous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the only uh, only way I found a way anyway to to mm -hmm. care for my skin long term without having to rethink. Okay, no, no, I should change because there's this, there's that. Now these 35 ingredients I mentioned the pre and the postbiotic. Well, I know I, I also have the emollients for my skin, the antioxidants as well in general mm -hmm. for the protection against free radicals and also the salts. So there's like uh, these, uh, this mixture. Wow. You know, I, um, so it's, you, you finally explained something to me. So I don't know that I can really demonstrate this um, on the podcast, but so here's, here's the cream, but I have to say, and I love this. I love this, but this blew my mind. And you just answered a question for me because when I first got the product, and I added it um, to the cream, you know, it, I just was like, wow, it's really not oily. And I put it on my skin and you answered the question. It literally, it's the humectants, is that correct? It just, it feels like your skin is getting a drink of water and you're not, you're not just slathering a bunch of grease on your skin. I just, I can't explain it. You just have to order the product and trust me. But here's the burning question I have. And, and it's one of the reasons I'm so excited to be a, an affiliate of your organization. You know, Lee and I are whole food plant-based. Um, we like to think of it as an entire lifestyle. It's not just about the food we eat. It's a lifestyle. It's a mentality. And the philosophy behind VGAM fits so nicely with the whole food plant-based lifestyle. You at one time had mentioned a campaign for women to go in and clean out their drawers, yeah. which, which I have done. Um, I love to think that someday I'm truly going to be a minimalist. Your product makes my skincare routine very simple i have to tell you it's really annoying when you go to some of these department stores and they're trying to sell you a specific cream for just the eyes and then you've got something for the lips and something just for the cheeks i mean i'm exaggerating but Not should so we much. be using should we be using I have two questions for you. I want your feedback on retinol and retin A base products. I would also like for you to comment on what is a common chemical that you see over and over again in a lot of the beauty products out there that makes you cringe. <laughs> Okay, so first, uh, well, not the easy one because vitamin A uh, and retinoids and, you know, they've been proven to be effective in studies mm -hmm. for different applications, acne and, and uh, even uh, uh, anti-aging. I don't believe in anti-aging because I do believe we age as the minute we're born. But anyway, that's a different story. Um, but these study, studies are very short term. So longer term, there's not that much information and you won't find it. Um, there's also great benefits. And actually, currently, the only really thing working really, really every time, but still not working uh, long term for everyone is Accutane, right? Like, or a version of, or different oh. doses of, which is vitamin A acid taken orally, right? Mm -hmm. Systemic, super harsh, you know, like treatment, uh, but it does really work. Like for those that have like this acne condition that they, 
you know, like sometimes not just balancing your skin will be enough. But everything else is really irritant. So what you do, you irritate your skin and then you create turnover and then you get a feeling that your skin is doing better and it might be doing better for a while, but then it comes back. The human body, I find, is so wonderful, wonderful and fabulous in its, uh, you know, ability to adapt. So you give it a molecule that it's supposed to be reacting to. It will, it will glow, it'll make your skin glow for a while, and then it will just adapt to it, and it's not going to do much. Wow. So, for me, retinol is looking at the symptoms. You have a symptom. And then you, you know, you use these. So any ingredient that really targets a symptom and that is not for the whole, you know, functions of the skin for me is not optimal because if you want your skin to function optimally, you really need to give it its basic. The 35 ingredients, by, by the way, most of them are ingredients that the skin produces, Wow. But because of our lifestyle, we live in city, we cleanse. Of course we cleanse. We put on sunscreen. We got to remove those products, you know, after. Um, but, um, but that, you know, creates uh, um, uh, a lack for the skin. So you got to restore the basics. That's one thing. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, in terms of uh, retinoid, like, there's some proof, but at the same time, it's an irritant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I can certainly see the skin getting into a cycle. As a matter of fact, I know that in the past, when I have used retin, retinoid based products, my skin will feel, I'll get a little sloughing. It feels pretty good. And then it just seems to just turn into dry skin. So I quit using those products. You know, what are your thoughts on SPF? Um, you know, it's a chemical and I see the need to block the sun, especially if you're out gardening, you have a lot of sun exposure. We all want to protect our skin. But at the same time, adding those chemicals and putting them on the skin, is it potentially harmful? And does your product have any SPF? Okay, good question. Fabulous question. I get this question quite often, actually. No, I, there's no FPS in my products. I do intend to develop one, but it's mm -hmm. complex because I don't do things halfway and I really want to have the go-to for FPS. And currently there's really two strategies, actually three, if you count the, you know, clothing, a big hat and, you know, stay out of, you know, the sun. Basically, this is one. One, I try to adopt as much as I can, but it's not always possible. You want to be outside. It's good for your mind, your spirit. And, um, well, you do activities outside, outside and we enjoy the, the, the summer. And um, so there are the chemicals and the physical FPS, right? So the chemicals are those molecules that by their composition, the way they're made, will absorb the UV rays. Usually it's rings, chemically it's like rings. But once they've absorbed it, they transform into another product, a byproduct, right? Then you have the physical uh, sunscreen, which are usually sometimes just um, zinc oxide, okay. sometimes a mixture of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. So these are the two molecules that are physical. They're, they're, they're literally, literally uh, uh, minerals that are blocking. Mm -hmm. So the UV is kind of reflected. Mm -hmm. But there's so many other ingredients in formulations for sunscreen, and especially with physical ones, it becomes really thick. So you have to use silicones, you have to use all of these ingredients to actually make the cream applicable. Otherwise, it's I don't know if you've ever tried these uh, creams that are <laughs> super har hard to spread. You know, it's because of the the the, the ingredients they use to uh, to create the FPS. So both of these work. It's been proven that some of the chemical ingredients may actually be harmful, if not to human, to the planet, to the oceans, to the environment. So these are, you know, like banned actually in some countries. 
there are, are others that don't really create uh, anything bad, but whether it's for the chemistry or the, the physical sunscreen, they all have ingredients that react to UVs. UVs create mutations in our cells. So of course they will transform uh, ingredients, right? Mm -hmm. And then these byproducts, they stay on your skin. So to develop something that's super safe for the mm -hmm. skin is very, very difficult. Right now, the alternative is the di direct UV, which is worse <laughs> than the byproducts, right? Mm -hmm. So if you cannot prevent going under the sun and you can put in a hat and everything, you know, like possible, of mm -hmm. course, if you're performing competitively and you don't like, you're going to have to put, you know, a sunblock, a good one. Uh, then once you're out of the sun, as soon as you can, you remove, you remove the the, the molecules because they will have reacted to UVs and are not so great for your skin, but it's a long-term effect. That being said, it's always a question of compromise. The UVs are much worse. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. <laughs> so should we be washing our face with just regular Irish spring soap? <laughs> <laughs> like what's your nighttime routine? Okay, good question. Love this question. So I actually developed a, cl a cleanser mm -hmm. that, and I developed it after the dua. I couldn't before, you know, every, everyone thinks, you know, develop a, a cleanser is easy, you know, like it's just so, no, it's actually, the, it's a science, right? So I wanted one that was protective of the essentials of our skin as much as possible. So those microorganisms, you know, we wash everywhere else, especially on our hands. We, we want to get rid of the microorganisms, but on our skin, we want to protect them on the skin on the, of the face. I mean, because it's not a vector on our hands. It's a vector of transmission of diseases, but on our skin, unless, you know, like you're very close to someone, you're going to transmit that disease a different means than, you know, through your cheeks. So don't worry about it. Even if you, you know, like you wouldn't you know, like take, get rid of all the microorganisms. It's actually very, very good. So that's a, the, the first thing, something that's very mild. And then there's a science behind it in terms of the pH mm. because, and, and the pH is of soap, like the regular soap is very basic, not great for, uh, for protecting your essentials. And the same, uh, other detergents are very acidic. And then, you know, like that would, uh, you know, come uh, to affect your skin because your skin needs to be in an environment that's slightly acidic. All your components, your molecules are in the right shape when they're in a slightly uh, acidic environment. In the right shape for what? To keep the water in. So to mm -hmm. stay hydrated, to do its function, to to do its exfoliation, natural exfoliation, it can exfoliate by itself and, you know, all of that is done around 4.5, 5 in terms of pH. Mm -hmm. So you don't want your, your cleanser to be at that pH because this is the confirmation that the, your molecules are great and you would strip everything away. So by, by seeing at a neutral pH is the ideal. So I would say if you can find, if you can't, don't have anything, but you can, you know, like you have option of, you know, three cleanser and one is neutral pH, take the neutral one because it's the one that's going to protect mostly your essentials. So this is the way I formulated. And evidently, I, I, you know, I made sure that I added compounds that were actually helping uh, any type of reactions. Uh, so it's, uh, it's developed, yeah, for that. Wow. And again, I recommend, and this is uh, really different than most, if it's, it's worse actually to clean too much than not to clean at all, right? So I cleanse just in the evening to get rid of anything from the day, the contaminants, uh, uh, sweat, ex excessive sweat, or, you know, like FPS, right? Makeup as well is a contaminant, right? So you want to remove all of that, but it's just the one sweat, sweat, you do your eyes at the same time, and then you would, re you know, you would apply the product and bring back the pH to the 4.55 at the optimal for your skin. And then this is, you know, very simple in the morning, just water is perfect because you haven't 
added anything to your skin. There's nothing bad. There's, you know, anything else would be irritating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love it. This is music to my ears. I don't know if you've <laughs> had the opportunity on, uh, I happened upon this on YouTube. A lot of the celebrities are sharing like their beauty routine, like their morning beauty routine. And uh, I think I was watching, um, oh, I forget her name, but she's a famous actress. And uh, I just thought if I had to do a beauty routine, mine is done in like three minutes in terms of the makeup I put on. Um, I mean, it's just, it's just a base. I don't, I don't use a primer. It's false eyelashes, blush and lipstick, and I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> But here they are putting on layer after layer, different products and so on and so forth. Your routine is so simple and yet it's really, really healthy for the skin. Um, wow, it just, it just sounds like a win-win. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, like for the mind too, you know, it's the skin, but it's our lifestyle, the peace of mind that we have, you know, like, because for me, I, I, I remember, you know, asking, okay, what can I do? What can I do? And I would have like these, oh no, you got to use this and this once a week and this twice a week. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. You know, like it's too, no, no. And, you know, I was convinced, okay, no, that's the only way. Okay. Okay. I'll try it. And then I, you know, I would last a couple of weeks really, if I was really, you know, uh, and then my skin would react. If I had breakouts, well, then I would become red and irritated if I was irritated and then, then, you know, I would break out depending on, you know, like what would be offered to, you know, like to, to balance it out. And it was like, really like following a recipe. And sometimes, honestly, I went straight to bed because I was like, Oh, and I'm going yeah. to bed, but it's even worse, you know, like, so now it's like, I've, I, I, I do it every night because it's really quick. You just like wash and then apply thank you it's always the same and then you know like you you become i don't know if you you're at that point where you kind of know how much proportions you're gonna make oh yeah i'm gonna put more today and mm -hmm. and i saw you there you know like with your serum mm -hmm. you gotta shake it because yeah. we didn't add, add any ingredients in it to suspend right yes yes and, and that's the other part of the philosophy as well you know like these 35 ingredients they're all they all have a function but mm -hmm. i didn't want it to be you know, so that the product, you know, like is suspended, you can mm -hmm. shake it and it's going to be fine. Yeah. So, and by having just the one step, you obviously there's two products, but you put a lot less. I don't know if you notice, but you really don't need a lot of each because, right. You know, it's the total of it that, you know, like you use for your, your face. Mm -hmm. But when you're using multiple layers of products, you're also mm -hmm. layering up preservatives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right agents to protect the, the the product from going bad right mm -hmm. so and these are never good and that's what i love about your philosophy i'm I, as i'm listening to you yes i did forget to shake this but <laughs> don't add a preservative don't add more chemicals i mean that's just what i want to stay away from you know i have to ask you this <laughs> when i did my cleansing of my drawers um, I had bought a beauty mask from, I think it was Avon and I never got around to using it. It's like one of those really muddy masks. Do you recommend utilizing products like that? I got rid of it cause I hadn't used it for like a year and a half. Um, but is that something you would incorporate into your beauty routine? Maybe once a quarter, or maybe I just don't ever need to think about masking even. So I get a lot of questions because we've heard for, you know, like even for me, 30 years, you know, like it took me 30 years to figure out that I needed to reprogram, you know, like my whole routine because we're, we're advised so many different things. For me, I used to go every quarter, you know, like to the esthetician to get, you know, this uh, extraction and, uh, you know, but my skin kind of started, you know, depending on it in a way, right? Or I would always break out after I came back and I, I would be told, oh, no, no, it's normal. It's your skin purging and, you know, all of these stories. But believe it or not, I started using my products in 2019. This is when I was actually formulating and testing and, you know, like, and I haven't gone since. 
So I don't add anything else. I don't do anything else. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, like, and mind you, I'm, I'm kind of a lazy per person for that. I want, you know, that's why I want 35 ingredients in one, because I don't want to have to do anything else. Right. Yeah. And the masks would stay there. And for me, it's not the way I relax. I much more, you know, enjoy, you know, going outside than, you know, putting a mask on and taking it off. But, you know, if the ingredients are not irritating, if it provides you, you know, with this mind space and this space where you can just relax, well, why not? You know, I don't, I don't see any, any downside to it if there are no irritants in those, uh, those formulations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So do you do animal testing on your product? No. Actually, wow. uh, no, no one should do. Actually, it's against uh, the rules. So anyone advertising no cruelty, they're right. It's, it's not, uh, we shouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody at, in 2024 should be doing. And I also think, and that's why we are, we have a vegan formulation. I so, so think currently the products available, the ingredients that are available to formulate are sufficient so that we can formulate without animal products even. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you've put so much thought behind the science and I learned a lot today. I didn't realize that the skin is actually a little bit more acidic and a lot of the soaps and over-the-counter products that we, that I have, I know used are more base, which can be very irritating to the skin. I love how simplified this routine certainly has, has become for me. Um, now tell me all of your products, are they procured in Canada? I know that you are based out of Canada. Tell me a little bit about that. Most of them, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to compromise. If there was one ingredient that I really needed for my formulation, I really, uh, uh, I really included it, even if it came from outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, because, and it's not because of Canada, Canada, it's because of the sustainable local sourcing as close mm -hmm. to, you know, like to, to, uh, the fabrication, uh, as possible. So we have Canadian products. We have lots of, uh, American ingredients, actually a few, uh, Europeans, Mm -hmm. And 35, there's quite a few, and there's even a few from Japan. Uh, there are, uh, you know, particularly when you look at proteins, um, these are super important for uh, especially uh, pre and, you know, like the microorganisms. So the pre and the postbiotics, uh, so the peptides, but uh, amino acids are the building blocks. This is mm -hmm. what really like uh, we're looking for for the skin. So, yeah. Wow. I sourced all over, but, uh, you know, I really, I really check who sells who is the manufacturer of that ingredients? What are the tests done? What is the research? Super important. You know, like it's mm -hmm. a really 360. Uh, so the thought behind the products is there. I've tried to, you know, think of everything. So you don't have to when, you know, like you just, okay, this is it. I'm going, you know, I'm going on vacation. I don't even need to bring, you know, like, oh, maybe it's going to do that. No, just bring a, you know, and that's it. Yeah, I love it. Well, you know, Lee is Canadian, so I have a heart for the Canadian people. And uh, I love that this is all at least packaged and put together in Canada. Um, are there any, are, are you thinking about potentially in the future moving into beauty products? Has that ever crossed your mind? It has. It has. And I, I do have an idea, but for now we have to, you know, become, you know, like we have to scale before we can sure. do anything else because yeah. So, so, uh, so yeah, I have, uh, very, very great ideas that are in line with, uh, the whole philosophy of vegan. So hoping, uh, actually to be able to do that in, uh, you know, probably a year and a half from now. Oh, wonderful. Well, is there anything I've missed? Is there something you wanted to let the listening audience know about your products? Um, certainly there will be a link below in the podcast of the vgambiome.ca. Um, I will have affiliate links as well on our website, but is there anything that I didn't ask or perhaps you want to just get the word out 
Now's your oh, chance. Oh, thank you. Uh, absolutely. You know, by, by going on the website, you can register to the uh, newsletter mm -hmm. and then we send information yeah. uh, regularly. We did build, build guides. So when you went through your, your you know, cleansing or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> pharmacy cleaning, uh, you probably used a no-no list of ingredients to avoid. So these are all the ingredients that you should look for, not just uh, in your products, but, you know, like in your detergents and they do create reactions sometimes you know so so all the products in your house so to look for to make sure they're not in your products actually this is what i meant we also have the oh yes list of ingredients and those specifically and this is one i i haven't mentioned regarding those wasteful or unnecessary we spend a lot of money using collagen or vitamin c which are molecules that are not beneficial nor they are bad, right? They're great. They're proteins in one sense and antioxidants, but they're really, really sold as much more than that. Mm. You know, so if they you have them in your products, they're not going to do harm at all. But you can do with another protein or amino acids. This is what you're looking for for your skin, uh, but not even for what you think because the skin cannot use collagen. So we have a few examples in the in in you know like in in our in our blog and uh, in what in the information we communicate. So to help in you know like is it worth the hundred dollars that I'm going to put in, you know, and the additional conservation agents mm -hmm. of con conservation that are ad added in it. Mm -hmm. You know that's what I love about your product. Again, it's so science backed. I mean. Collagen is pushed in a lot of beauty products and a lot of women, myself included, I used to think, oh, I, I, of course my skin's going to need collagen. But as you're saying, as you're stating, it's, it's not anything that if you put a product like that on your skin, it's probably going to do nothing. Correct? Well, if you don't have any other source uh, of protein, it's going to use some of it, mm -hmm. but you know, mm -hmm. like it doesn't, your skin doesn't use proteins really. Mm -hmm. It's the microorganisms on top of it, you know, like, but they, they're really like, they can feed on a lot of things. Right. So, so, so they don't need necessarily that nitrogen source, any source wow. will do. Right. So, so, yeah. and it's honestly a bit of the same internally, like I'm going to get in something else, but, but, um, you know, what you need is good amino acids hmm. so that you can build your collagen yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And vitamin C being a cofactor. This is why, you know, like there's so much interesting science, but um, it's been overused, you know, to sell special diets or products or, you know, and sometimes there's no real science behind it. Yeah, it's a lot of hype and it's hype that's pretty expensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been absolutely wonderful. I can't thank you enough for joining me today. Um, as I thank said, I'm going to leave a link, our affiliate link below, because I am going to be pushing this product big time. Thank you oh, so thank much you for so much. Joining, joining us today, Dr. Mimi. <laughs> well, thank you, Joyce, for having me. It was a pleasure as always. Awesome.